Uh, you, you've, over, you've overcome a lot to reach this stage. What would you have thought if someone told you when you were living on a bridge after Hurricane Katrina that one day you'd be playing in the Super Bowl? Uh, I probably tell them it was crazy. <laughs> you know, uh, especially just going through it as a kid. Um, it doesn't really affect you, you know, at that moment. But as you get older, uh, you realize that tragic event that you went through and what we all went through in New Orleans and how far we came and how we made it out. So it's nothing but a blessing from God to help us get through that tragic, those crazy times. All right, we're going to go over to Rod Walker from the times Picayune. Hey, Leonard, congratulations, man. Um, sort of the same thing of uh, going from the seventh war to the Super Bowl, but also just you and Tyron Matthews' uh, relationship, man. Just what does that mean that both of y'all are getting to share the stage together, two St. All guys? Uh, it means it means a lot coming from uh, coming from coming from New Orleans to make it where we at, uh, especially like guys like Tyron. Uh, we both went to the same high school, same college, things like that. Uh, we both wore number seven, so uh, this. It's like a, it's a big brother, little brother chemistry we have, you know. So he's one of the greats that came out of New Orleans, also plays at LSU and also right now in the NFL, who's playing at a high, one of the highest levels as a safety. So it's also going to be a good, uh, that was a good competition to go against each other and make each other better in the long, in the long run. We'll go to James Wilson from Sky Sports. Hi, Leonard. Uh, there's so many... Uh, attacking options in both teams. I wanted to ask you specifically about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Um, somebody like yourself who runs and catches the ball, he's doing it all in his rookie season. What 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 are his strengths as you see them? Uh man, uh I've been I've been in class since I was at LSU. And uh just seeing him coming through LSU as when I was I think a sophomore and a junior. And Always knew he had the the playmaking ability. Coach Frank Wilson always put tape of him up, you know, just showing us how he could run, catch, and pass, and how small he was, but also his strength, you know. And uh, it's amazing to see where he's come from, how he's how he's producing, and which is it's no brainer. He did it in college, so I'm happy for him. We'll go to Tom Rock from Newsday. Leonard, I saw you tweeted at or retweeted your uh, message from, I guess, when you were a senior in high school. Is that right? What, yeah. uh, what, what do you remember about writing that? And, and uh, how often did you think about that over the past few years? And, and, and how hard was it to find it, to go back and find it? Uh, the tweet, uh, actually, I didn't find it. Someone else did. And uh, actually, I, don't, I didn't even remember even much tweeting that, <laughs> to keep it real. And when I when I seen it, it's crazy how you manifest on things and you speaking into existence. So I'm just blessed to be in this, opp this opportunity I have right now to play in this big game with a lot of other great players on the, on this team and the other team too. So uh, I feel good, man. We'll go over to Gene Frenette. You said Ferret or Frenette? Frenette. Frenette. Uh, maybe my Hi, What's up? What's up, Leonard? Your guy in Jacksonville. Have you have you forgotten already? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh, what's up, my guy? You good? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> so, could you just take us through a uh, two parter last? You know, this this whole past year. I mean, you, you're kind of the guy. You're the guy in Jacksonville as long as you're healthy. Then you get released, and then you're kind of sort of not the guy in Tampa. Maybe back up sharing time with Ronald Jones, and then all of a sudden Ronald gets hurt. Could you, so, could you talk about just the adverse circumstances of this season and how awkward the whole transition has been. Yeah. So just start off from the beginning, you know, getting cut prior two weeks before the season fell by Jacksonville. Uh, it was a, uh, it was upset, upsetting moment for me and my family, you know, this is how I feed my family. Uh, this is how I take care of them also. And just me, ha me having to understand and recognize there was also some greater for me at the end, you know, the prior that I wasn't getting the ball like I used to, I was sharing time with Rojo. It didn't matter, you know. Uh, I had to, like I said, this. I think this this season was a humbling season for me, and I think I tweeted that uh, a while back too, because when you used to be used to participating in the wins, uh, you know, as an athlete and as a competitor, that's just how I am. I want to feel like I did something to help the team, not just to sit on the bench and, you know, play here and there. But everything wound up working out in my favor at the end. You know, me, me and Rojo makes makes a a hell of a one-two punch in a backfield. And like I say, without him, uh, Shady, or, or Sneak, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at right now, just learning from each other and understanding each other and uh, just getting better as a whole, as a group. 
we go to Danny Kelly from the Ringer. Hey Leonard, what if anything has changed for you kind of late in the season? Do you feel like a light went on for you in the offense or something that helped you find your groove over the past six weeks or so? No, I'm not gonna say that. You know, I always had my groove. I just didn't play a lot. Uh, I just say mm -hmm. it was timing. You know, God's timing. You know, you can't rush it. You know, what's for you is for you at the end of the day. I mean, I can't no man on earth take that from you. And just for me to be in this position I am now, I'm just grateful. You know, just coming from being cut and now playing the Super Bowl with, with my new team and my new organization, you know, it feels great. Go over to Jenna Lane. Hey, Leonard, uh, congratulations on making it to the Super Bowl and congratulations on fulfilling that, uh, that tweet that you put out into the universe on uh, on February 2nd, 2014, when you were a high school senior, you said, can't wait till I play in that Super Bowl. How important was it for you to put that out there at that age and have something to work towards? And, and what does it mean to, to actually be one step closer to fulfilling that? Yeah, I think it's every uh, athlete's dream come out of, uh, coming from high school or going to college or whatever to, on different levels just to play in the Super Bowl. You know, understand it's, it's, it's difficult to get here. You know, to have a guy like Tom who's been here 10 times is, is amazing, you know, and uh, I get to learn from a guy like that. And also, just also just understanding, don't ever, you know, give up when you dream. You know, all work pays off at the end of the day. And throughout every, all the adversity I went through this year, you know, I wind up helping my team be one of the, one of the minor parts to help my team just to get there. And uh, I feel happy about that. We'll go over to Kendra Douglas. Hey, Leonard. So kind of going back to the connection you have with Tyron, I spoke with your um, former coach, Crutchfield, and two questions. One, um, do you remember the letter that you wrote before, high, before you left high school where you had four goals? Because he mentioned that you wrote a letter to him and you had four goals on them, and he didn't tell me all of them, but he mentioned you already accomplished one. Um, and then can you just kind of, again, talk about the magnitude and how rare it is that you and Tyron have such long history and connection and you guys get to finally play on this big stage? I think uh, your, 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 your mic was going in and out, so I couldn't really hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, so I spoke with Coach Crutchfield, and he mentioned to me that you had brought him up a list of four goals. Um, and he wanted to, do you, can you hear me? Yeah, I get you. Okay, and he asked me um, to remember, remind you of those goals, or if you can remember those goals. He said you've already accomplished one of them, and so far, have you been able to accomplish the goals that you've set for yourself? And then can you talk about the magnitude? Looks like, looks like it's cutting out. Do you want to try and answer that one later? So uh, the goals I've set, uh, I really can't remember the goals that I've set. Uh, I know I wrote it on a piece of paper, you know, for, for Coach Crutchfield, my, I want to say my junior year when he first got there. And uh, I couldn't hear the, the second part of, of your of a question. So I didn't understand the second part. I believe it was about your relationship with Tyrion and going back so far. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've been on turn uh, since I was a little kid. Uh, when I was in, I think, seventh and eighth grade, he was a, a senior at St. Out. And uh, just watching him, watching him play, you know, the plays he made, the same th the same plays he made in college, and now he's making the NFL. I've always been a witness of that since I was a kid. And um, just knowing what he brings to the table and the, the, the motivation he brought to guys like me in uh, my class and under me, you know, the things he was doing, it was tremendous for someone doing it at his size, you know. So... Happily, uh, I went to LSU and I've uh, I asked him and Pat P, can I wear number seven? And they gave me to go to wear it. And uh, after that, history history wrote, wrote itself. You know, I think that's why guys wear number seven, you know, because the seven is the playmakers and everything else that comes with it at LSU. We'll go to Adam Beasley from the Miami Herald. Hey, Leonard, thanks for taking the time. I'm curious, uh, your name came up a couple of times in the spring and in the summer with the Dolphins first in trade talk and then potentially in free agency. Uh, was that something that was real or is that just kind of nonsense? No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's something I got to ask my agent. I mean, a lot of teams was calling for me, uh, trying to pick me up. So uh, I couldn't tell you if, the, if there was one of the teams, but I know a lot of teams were calling and asking for me, though. 
We'll go to Frank Schwab from Yahoo Sports. Hey, Leonard, I, I just wondered, how would you describe your NFL career to this point? I mean, obviously, a whole bunch of expectations where you were drafted, hype coming in. It's been a lot of ups and downs. What, how would you describe how it's gone? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's not done yet. You know, it's still unwritten. Uh, the two the two years that I didn't, well, I rushed for 1,000 yards and with two seasons, you know, the, the seasons that I didn't rush, like this year, I didn't play as much. And uh, my other years, I was hurt with a hamstring. So, like I say, uh, when I'm healthy, you know, the sky's the limit for me. You know, so it's, it's been up and down, like you said, but um, just trying to get better throughout the years right now, you know, focusing on this game. But when that time comes, you know, to put those numbers up and do what I have to do to perform and be recognized, that's what, that's what, that's what I will do. We'll go to John Reed from the Florida Times Union. John? All right, we'll go over to Jeff Duncan. Yeah, Leonard, um, I'm curious. I, I know you go way back. You played on a lot of great teams uh, in your high school career, your college career. I'm curious, uh, what's the last championship you've won? Would it go back to Goretti or, or something that far? And and what would it mean to you to win a, a championship? I mean, you're one step away. I know you got emotional after the NFC championship game, but what would it mean to you to, to get a, a championship? Well, that means a lot, man. The last championship I won was at Goretti. Uh, I, 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 I've always came up short in uh, high school in the semifinals. Uh, never made it to the playoffs in college. So it, mean, it means a lot, you know, uh, just finish off something I've always dreamed of, always winning a, a Super Bowl and making it back to the championship. So it means a lot to me. All right, we'll go over to Zach Goodall. Hey, Leonard, I, I know from your time in Jacksonville, uh, you're a pretty charitable guy. Uh, you left the trophies at Reigns High School as well as the march that you helped cooperate with um, for BLM during the past off season. I'm curious what you plan on doing this off season in terms of social injustices or other charitable work. Well, right now, uh, I haven't figured it out yet, you know, but I know for sure uh, I'm going to get back to my high school. Like I always do get back for scholarships, for kids to go to college, things like that. And also uh, social justice for a point, you know, that's never over with. So I'm always working on my team, Rock Nation to figure out ways that we can keep this light going on and not not let some voices be unheard. So we're gonna figure it out as the week as the ways go as the weeks goes on right now. Right now, just focusing on this game. We'll go over to George Radney. Uh, let me get yes, good afternoon, uh, Leonard. Good afternoon, Leonard. George Radney, Challenger Community News. Uh, what what is it about you guys uh, from 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 Louisiana, you guys seem to when you come into the league, you guys seem ready to play. You like you like you did your work, your, like your college was your internship or something, and you guys always seem to do well at this at the highest level, uh, being in the NFL and, and, and being with Tyran all these years. How does that feel? Did this uh, grow up with somebody and, and and be on the big stage with them as well? Uh, I mean, it feels great. You know, in Louisiana, you know, down south, that's what football is. You know, not just Louisiana, Florida too. Uh, that's where football at, you know, and uh, that's where we bred, we bred football players. And also um, this plan, plan against, you know, a guy like Tyron, you got to understand uh, he was the first person, like, for me, you know, out, out the city who, out, out, out our city who really made it big and who was doing tremendous things like on a college level, you know, the honey badge just started with the dye in his hair, you know, things like that. And uh, you should have seen how many people was looking up to that, admiring that and all the plays he made. So uh, he's definitely the first, I must say, to motivate a lot of guys, you know, to play football. Uh, he made a way, you know, telling them, making sure the kids know that they can make it out, especially like myself. So uh, he's been a, he's been a real motivation to the city. We'll go to Courtney Smith. Hi, Leonard, how you doing? I'm good. So 
you know, it's Black History Month. This summer, this past summer, we were going through those Black Lives Matter protests. And I was wondering if there was any music or any artist in particular that really stuck with you and, you know, motivated you. It could be artists from the past, you know, from the civil rights movement era, or it could be, you know, things all the way up until now, if there's any any song or any artist that have really stuck with you and motivated you. Uh, I mean, I got a lot of friends as artists, but I think the, the number one song stuck on was, was from Meek, Meek Mill, Other Side of America. You know, for, for him to have, you know, that speech and in the beginning of the song and then him telling the real facts of coming from both sides, you know, because I've, I've been to the side not having no money, living in the trenches, but to, for, to having money. So I know both sides. So that's probably the only song. We're going to go back to John Reed from the Florida Times Union. What's up, Leonard? Can, can you talk about just the difference you see in the culture being there in Tampa Bay as opposed to when you were in Jacksonville? What, what, what's the biggest difference in the culture there? Uh, well, I, couldn't, I couldn't really answer that because when I was in uh, Jacksonville, we had talent all over the board. You know, like we have here, we have swag. We have swag here too. So uh, I don't know, that's a hard question. That's a tough question to answer. <laughs> We'll go over to Luke Easterling from Bucks Wire. Hey, Leonard, how you doing? Good. When you look back at your, I mean, entire football career, you know, to being a kid and, and playing in high school, you know, obviously the, the attention that came with the kind of player you were at LSU to the way your NFL journey has gone, what has maybe lived up to your expectations and what has been different than you expected now that you have finally, you know, now that you're in the Super Bowl, obviously, and things have worked out in that way, how can you, how, how do you reflect on your entire football career and what got you to this moment? Uh, I think my entire football career has been great. You know, uh, from high school, you know, for being a number one player coming out of high school, uh, you got to understand a lot of guys, when that happens, a lot of guys don't live through that. You know, they don't, they don't live up to the hype. Uh, it was number of guys that helped me get through where I'm at right now. And also, for me being so productive in college and becoming drafted as the, the number four pick overall, I think it was number one guy. You know, that's that's who I can just count on with that. And I think my overall career, you know, it's, it's been okay. You know, it's going to get better and better as time goes on. You know, mark my words. We'll go to Matt Matera from Pewter Report. Hey, Leonard, congrats on reaching the Super Bowl. Uh, I apologize if you already answered this, but whether it's you or Ronald Jones doing your thing in the run game, it can't be done without the play of the offensive line. Can you just speak to how well they've played so far uh, here in the postseason? Oh, that's my guys, man. Uh, you know, they've been doing their thing, you know, the whole year. And I think uh, a lot of the credits goes to them, you know, uh, from protecting us for, to Tom, to getting off, to still blocking, to get the pass to the to the wide receiver. So, their work ethic doesn't go unnoticed. You know, I know how hard that is. You know, so big shout out to my guys up front who gets the job, who gets the job done. All right, we'll go back to James Wilson from Sky Sports. Hi again, Leonard. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about uh, the Chiefs defense. What, what did you make of them when you came up against them in week 12? How do you hope to kind of reverse that score from that game this Sunday? Uh, I mean, week 12, I, re I really didn't get a chance to play. You know, I played, but not like not like talking about it. But I know that they're, they're athletic all over the all over the board. I know uh, it starts with uh, number 55, 95, uh, number 32. You know, that's their that's their biggest playmakers on the team. Uh, 49, he's, he's he's very intelligent. So is 56. So uh, we're gonna have our work cut off cut off for us. You know, they're, they're not gonna give us anything. You know, they've been here before. Uh, we gotta come out. You know, on our P's and Q's. And also, just understand this is not this is not going to be this is not going to be an easy fight for us. That's all we know. Go over to Henrique Bulio. Leonard, hi from Brazil. Congratulations on playing the Super Bowl. Uh, I was just wondering, what is the biggest lesson you've learned when playing the postseason back in 2017 that is being useful right now in this playoff run? Uh, my the biggest lesson I learned: don't take anything for granted. You know, it took me three years to get back to where I'm at right now, you know. So just knowing, uh, you know, preparation, you know, doing everything and whatever it takes just to get this W, you know, you got to play this game like it's going to be your last game of your life. 
you know, because you might not get back here to get back here too often. Like JP said, JPP said the other day, it took him eight years to get back here. You know, uh, that's a long time. So just the little things, just understanding and also sacrificing the little things so we have big results at the big results at the end. That's that's my only thing. We'll go to Colin Cronin with the Irish NFL show. We have about five minutes left. Hi, hey, Leonard. How's it going? Greetings from uh, Dublin, Ireland. I, I remember when uh, you came to play in London and uh, you talked about the uh, the long flight. I suppose two, two things. One, what was the experience of coming to London like? And secondly, how nice is it to have a home Super Bowl and have the stadium across from the training facility? Man, going to London was crazy. You know, uh, on a flight, I probably woke up, went back to sleep six times. You know, I woke up. And my mind, I'm like, damn, we still flying. Went back to sleep. We still in the air. So it's probably one of the longest flights I had. And uh, just coming to, uh, coming over there, it was great, a great experience for me. You know, my first time over there was, was eating Wagyu steak, and it was high. You know, I had to pay for me. I think it was me, Telvin, and uh, my house food. And uh, this overall experience over there it was great. And uh, just playing back home is a wonderful feeling. You know, to be a part of one of the first group of guys on the first group of team to do to, to do this. It's amazing. So I'm happy. All right. We're going to go over to Ron Higgins. Yeah, Leonard, Ron Higgins, Tiger Right Magazine. Uh, yesterday, Tom McNair said that he felt you turned your season around. What's up, Ron? Oh, my God. <laughs> How, you doing, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. All right, man. Uh, yesterday, Tom McNair talked about how your season turned around for you when you accepted your role uh, as part of rotation. And it said you really took off when you, when you kind of accepted it. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I totally agree with him. And, just uh, talk about, yeah, and I just think, I just think it was just, it was difficult for me. You know, like I say, you come from a team where the offense ran through you and you come to a team where, you know, you just, you you're like a part of the offense, you know, so it's different. So, uh just had to accept my role and just ball. That's about it. We'll go over to Brian DeArdo from CBS Sports. Hey, Leonard, congratulations on making it to uh, your first Super Bowl. Uh, it was only a couple of years ago where, where you were in another playoff run. Specifically, you know, you were part of that playoff upset win over Pittsburgh. What do you remember about that game? I know Antonio had a big game. You had a big game. And what has it been like to have Antonio as a teammate the last several months? Uh, I remember that, that game, it was cold, you know, uh, and it was a battle hard fought game. And I know AB was going crazy out there. And like I said, just having guys like him as a teammate, you know, it's great. You know, uh, you don't know the talks that we have, the little talks that we have with each other, you know, how long that goes for me, you know, and understanding and trusting the process. You know, even when I first got here, you know, he's like, man, you know, you're a baller, you know, your time won't come. He kept telling me that over and over and over. And, uh, it's, pay, it's paying off. It's paying off, as you can see. Back to Frank Schwab from Yahoo Sports. Hey, Leonard, I, I just want to know, what was it like when the Jaguars cut you and you didn't know your NFL future? And what's it like for you now being such a big part of an NFC championship team? Uh, it, was, it was a tough time a tough time for me, you know, uh, going into work. And uh, someone was at the gate saying the coach wanted to see me. And uh, he just cut me. You know, it wasn't no real uh, explaining, you know, why uh, it just happened. So, uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a terrible feeling, you know, I took a week off, had to get my mind right and, uh, and understand, you know, try to understand what, why, what was going on. And also it just, I just took time and just chill with my kids, you know, you know, cause sometimes you could get discouraged for when things happen in your life. And I, I was chilling with my kids and I had to just realize, you know, they're my why, you know, they're why I do this. It's just, they're why I play. And that's what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for them, you know? So I just try not to lose focus on the bigger picture of what's going on and um, just kept forward. All right, our last one's going to come from Christopher Holmes from NFL Chile. Hi, Leonard, how are you doing? Good, good. And <laughs> um, this one is to, to ask you, uh, from talking to a lot of uh, players, it looks like it's going to be a, an LSU reunion. And how special it's going to be to have so many players that you 
played with or looked up to both uh, on your team and in the other? Well, it's going to be great. Uh, I can't wait to see my guy, Darrell Williams, you know, uh, coming out. We both graduated in the uh, class of 2014. And in Louisiana, he was always number one running back. He was number two running back. And we also, he came out LSU with, with each other. We was competing each and every week. And uh, just understanding guys like him, you know, not just me who made it uh, from New Orleans and who also was producing in the playoffs. It's a great feeling, man, since one of my my teammates from college came in with each other, we both from New Orleans. Uh, it's great. You know, we got Kevin, you know, we have Cyril, uh, we have Clyde, you know, we have Tyra, you know. So I think in New Orleans and Louisiana, Paris are getting represented all over, you know, Louisiana, uh, LSU. So it's great. Oh, that's all for today. Thanks, Leonard. Appreciate it.